Help. Really? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chaos Dreams. For those of you who are new, welcome. And for those of you returning, thank you for your loyalty. So in our previous video, we talked about the clutch, which has to do with the transmission and everything in between. So now we're gonna go into depth of how to take off the transmission, the flywheel, the clutch. Let's get right to it. Now that we got the car up in the air, first thing, 12 bolt right here. We have to take off this one. There's two of them in each side, one right here. And you have the next one that's gonna be right here and then to take off the intercooler if you have anything like ducting or anything you should take this off it'll make your life easier getting this off uh, depending on how your setup is this is going to be an eight mil or you can do a flat head and you don't have to take the whole shebang off you just have to make sure it breaks the seal so there we go just wiggle it off just like that this one's a little more of a hidden. Come on, right there. Now that we have this off, you should be able to just wiggle it off. You're gonna have to probably go from side to side. And we're gonna tilt it forward, all right? And then pull it out. Look how massive this thing is. Thank you, Grim Speed. Love you guys. All right, dirty, but we'll clean it later. Goof, you know what I forgot to tell you guys to do? Disconnect your battery. I'm so sorry. I should have told you that at the very, very beginning. So uh, disconnecting your battery is a 10 mil. If you have an OEM battery, that's the negative side, just disconnect. The next step we have to do is we're gonna have to take off a bunch of plugs. This is gonna be the brown plug, one of three. Then there's a gray plug right here. And then another brown small plug. We got it disconnected. And these are gonna go to the transmission. And this, this harness right here, we need to take this off right here. So this is a 10 mil ground wire that also needs to be disconnected. And we'll let that hang down. We have everything disconnected. We have the two wires, neutral switch, reverse switch, and the main brown harness, which is kind of hard to see at this angle, but you get the gist. So the next thing we're gonna take off is the operating cylinder, it's called, official name. Uh, so we're gonna take this. This is gonna be a uh, 14 millimeter bolt. And there's two of them. There's one, one on this side and then one on this side. There's no pressure on this cylinder to where it's gonna fling out so you don't have to worry about it. Now that this cylinder operator is gonna be out of the way and then we gotta take this 12 millimeter off. With everything removed, the next thing we have to tackle is a pit stop. The pit stop is gonna require two different type of bolts to be removed. The 14 millimeter up front and the 15 millimeter uh, in the back. I would move the pitch stop completely out of here just because this this is gonna be a big challenge to deal with when you're putting it back. We need to take these bolts out for the service tool to be able to support the engine from the firewall to the engine. That right there, my friends, is gonna be a really good investment if you're ever having your intercooler off or you have a front mount. Uh, because the rubber little cover that comes in there has been known to fall off and into the clutch. If you can, definitely upgrade this. But I have to take this off in order to get to the service tool, in order for the service tool to be able to lay flat on the engine. So we're gonna take that off real quick. Is we need to take off the negative terminals here. These bolts, these are all 12 millimeter. So we're gonna take that off next. So the service tool, we're gonna put after you take off the support rod, you're gonna put this bolt that came from that, and you're gonna put a washer. It says two, but I think you can get away with one. You're gonna put the washer like this. That bolt that we took off before, installed from the engine and to the firewall. Uh, I didn't put this tool all the way through, it's just there to at least make contact on the other side here. And this tool, right now it's loose, but once you start tightening it, it won't be as loose. The whole point of it is to support, again, the engine from moving back or forth. So the next step is to start taking off the bolts on the transmission. You got one here and then another one right there. And then 
The starter has to come out as well, which has also two bolts. They're all 14 millimeters. And then I'll show you how to take the starter off and get you guys a better angle if I can. I do have some wire connections to take off. So we'll start on the easier side, which is gonna be the non-starter side, and just take off the 14 millimeter bolts. We're gonna take off the top bolt here, which is 14 millimeter. Then we gotta go underneath the car because it's the easiest way to get to everything. Now that we're under the car, we gotta take off the skid plate, four bolts, 12 millimeters, and then we're gonna have to take off the J pipe. Skid plate's off. Next thing is to take this J pipe off. Make sure you take off your oxygen sensor plugs. You can leave the the oxygen sensors on, unstrap your grounding strap. Wow, say that five times fast. And then uh, same thing, 15 millimeter bolts here. And you have to take off all this just to get the J pipe off. Now that the J pipe's removed, the next thing is to continue with taking off the starter bolt. We have to expose this boot right here. We take off this 12 millimeter bolt and make sure your ground wire is off. And then we have another bolt right here that we have to take off. And this starter will come right out for you, which I already loosened as well. So this is uh, where I'm gonna leave us for now and I'll resume tomorrow. It is late, I'm tired and uh, I wanna get some sleep. All right guys, see you in a bit or tomorrow. You know what I mean, bye. The next thing we're gonna do is take off the wheels. Now the wheels are off. We're gonna have to get underneath the car and we're gonna have to drain the transmission oil. A couple things, we have the bucket. Favorite thing, of course, is the Torx 70. You're gonna need this bad boy to train that drain plug. Underneath the car, and we have our bucket ready. And we do have to take off um, a few other things, but this is one of the main things you're gonna do because we will have to take off these axles here when we pop these off if this oil has drained it's gonna get everywhere so that's why we have to do this first while the transmission fluid is still draining we do have to take take off this exhaust hanger which is for the center uh, exhaust however in order to get to that easier we're gonna take off the heat shield which we need to take off anyways because we need to get to the drive shaft so uh, these are 12 millimeter bolts just like the exhaust hanger is so we'll go ahead and take this off there's four of these one and uh, two in the front here, and then two in the back. That's gonna look like right here. With all the bolts taken off, we're going to slip this out of the exhaust just like that. Go after the uh, center exhaust hanger up here, and I'll turn you guys around and give you guys a better view of what that looks like. Now that we have that uh, shield off, you can see the exhaust hanger uh, bolts right there. So we just need to take those two off. That way this will allow us when we use our transmission jack, this won't be bent. So once we get the oil drain, drained out, we want to make sure we clean off the magnetic drain bolt. Also replace your washer. Depending on the washer color, it looks like the Subaru Technical uh, Bulletin wants you to know that there's a couple of things. If it is aluminum, um, which is like a silver, that's gonna be 35, sorry, 32.5 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Copper gasket, which is a brown color, and the black actually are the same. Uh, that's actually gonna be 51.6. All cleaned up, and the black washer that's on there, this is now almost down to a drip, so that's a good sign. So we'll go ahead and seal it up. I round up, so this was 52.6. So I'm doing, or 51.6, so I'm doing 52. The propeller is an interesting one because we do have to remove uh, another section of the exhaust. So I do apologize, I should have told everyone to remove that, but I'm just going by step by step because that way you don't forget anything. So we gotta remove this mid pipe. The next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take off these bolts. They want you to make a little stripe mark. You can kind of see it like right here that I made from my first time that I did this. So I'll make it on this side. And all it's doing is just knowing that we put this exactly where it's supposed to go. So right here, we're gonna have to wrap this section, especially right here, so it won't get damaged. Four bolts down there, and then these two bolts here. Then we're going to take uh, or slide this out. So the next thing that Subaru suggested is what they do is uh, put a bag over it. And that's on their technical guide, is you're gonna put like a Ziploc bag on it and that way the oil won't drip out. That drain pan that we took, 
you have it ready because this will drip for sure. So right here is the center uh, drive shaft and what they're doing is they want you to tuck cloth in here because when we take this off, which by the way, only take these bolts off, don't try to disassemble anything else, but when we take these two bolts off on here and well, the whole drive shaft assembly, assembly this is going to move around because it's supposed to. Uh, but only in a certain free motion. So they want you to, to get in here and push inside and kind of tuck inside uh, to where this dry shaft won't be rubbing against the metal itself. So now that we're back here, what we're gonna do, these are 12 millimeter bolts. All right, with the bolts off, then the yoke now is free or the drive shaft, but it will not come down until we take off this two bolts here. These are going to be your 14 millimeter bolts that we have to take off. And again, I have the drive shaft wrapped as suggested from Subaru, uh, getting our pan ready as well. Try all you can, if you can, to not let this bend too much because then you'll damage it. And what I'm doing behind us is I'm gonna back out. Try not to bend it. This is what you guys want to seal up right here with the plastic bag. So just do that, zip tie it. We're gonna now take the gear selector uh, off and that is gonna require four 10 millimeter bolts. Now that we got the cover off for the gear shift selector, there's gonna be two cables that we need to take off. You're gonna take off this as well, these little uh, cable holders. So right here, little clips, I pushed them to the side both at the same time, and then voila, you had it pulled off. This actually just pops off, it just slides off. Literally just gonna wiggle it off, and you're done. So with these clips, like I said, we're just gonna get our little, a little wrench here, and just kinda use the leverage and wiggle it out. And now we should be able to start slowly sliding these out. Again, be very careful when sliding them out, not to bend them. One out, and the best thing to do is to start on this side, the straight one. Looks like this. I took this one out first, so it was the easiest. And now taking out this one should be a lot easier. We're just navigating this back here best we can without trying to cause too much angles. There we go. Learning from what we learned on the passenger side, we're gonna do the right side with you guys. We're gonna knock this nut off by using the 32 millimeter uh, impact gun from Cobalt. This thing is awesome. We have to replace this from Subaru, which I'll find out how much these things cost. Same thing as the passenger side, 17 millimeter on this sway bar connector, 14 to take the pillow ball off. So now that that's all done, we're gonna have to pull this down right here to allow the front axle um, by the caliber uh, to pop out first. Pull that out. We just need to pop this off, but now that the axle's out, it should pop off a lot easier. Look at that. With the bolts now off and the nut off, the nuts, we're gonna now get the transmission jack underneath. All right, transmission supported. So now we gotta take off right here, this is 14, and then you have to take off this bolt right here, which is going to be 17 millimeter. Having this service tool installed, now I can go ahead and turn this and watch the engine tilt this way, which will help with the transmission. And that way when I lower the jack, bit by bit, I can turn that to help adjust and let it just slip out. You guys stay up top, I'm gonna go below. I'm gonna get something between it, try to prop it off. Uh, using a crowbar on between, and just slowly wedging it out. Oh, wait. There we go. When it's perfectly aligned, it's supposed to just slide out, just like it's doing right now. Lowering it down, and then wiggling it. There she is, boys. I wanna say that it had to do a lot with the way the tool is put on. And that was my fault again. So yes, tool for the win, because it made it a hell of a lot easier being on the incline. All right, I want to show you what I figured out. Not allowed us to move. Just trying to basically put it in here. There we go, like that. See how that's not moving? Just got to do that, rinse, repeat. Six in total for the pressure plate. 
There we go. The uh, flywheel, same concept is gonna apply. I'm gonna use this to allow me to take this off. Take this tool off. Now we're just gonna let this drop down. Ooh, that dust in my face. All right, guys, let's get back to the top. All done, uh, everything is pulled. I am excited that I got to show you guys the whole process. I cannot wait to get it all edited and put together for you guys. I know it's gonna be a long video, but it is so worth having that education for everybody and then get pre prepared for it. And hopefully it saves you from a lot of pitfalls. I don't think, again, you need the service tool per se. I do think that the service tool absolutely helps, but I know you can do it without it. It's just a lot more of a pain in the ass because that engine is moving back and forth. And with the service tool uh, that mounts the engine to the firewall, it didn't move at all. This meant so much to do to me for you guys. If you guys want to see more, uh, basically how to put this back together, let me know. I'm going to try to get this video uploaded before uh, I get this all put back together to find out if you guys want to see how to put it back together, but I'm pretty sure you can just reverse order everything. There's a lot to do. This video is a guide. It's not telling you exactly how to do it, but you're saving a bunch of money um, on your Geico car insurance. I'm kidding. Um, you're saving a bunch of money doing it yourself. You just have to take the time. It's an eight hour job, so just be prepared. If you have another car or you have a garage or somewhere you can do this to where you can do it day by day, that's the best way because you can take your time. Thank you for watching very much. And as always, dreams are not simple. And as you can see behind me, that is 100% the case. All right, guys, thank you again. Peace out.